Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can take a look at the signs of a wife with sadistic traits. So before I've done videos on husbands and wives with narcissistic traits and psychopathic traits, so here I'm looking at sadism. So I answer this question by looking at the 10 signs of a wife with sadistic traits. So this video is focused on a husband and wife relationship. In theory, one that is somewhat stable, so not a new relationship or a dissolving relationship. And many of these items could, of course, also apply to a long-term partnership, whether or not the couple was married. Now, some years ago, there used to be a personality disorder called sadistic personality disorder. It was abandoned for a variety of reasons, including confusion with other diagnostic classifications. However, Many researchers agree that sadistic personality exists, even if knowledge of it doesn't effectively guide treatment. Someone has this type of personality when they score high on trait sadism. So I'll refer to this type of personality as SP, sadistic personality. If someone has SP, they have a tendency to engage in demeaning, antagonistic, or cruel behaviors with the purpose of experiencing pleasure excitement, satisfaction, or to assert dominance. With SP, there's an emotional deficit related to violence and a propensity toward violence, which of course we also see in psychopathy. Now, psychopathy and SP are rooted in a lack of empathy, but what's different about SP is the presence of pleasant emotional experiences when causing or witnessing harmful acts. So for somebody who has a high level of psychopathy, a psychopath, who does not have comorbid SP, although of course many do, violence to them is acceptable. It's a means to an end. It's not necessarily something that produces pleasure, but it's something the psychopath is willing to do so they can meet their goals. If someone has SP, they are receiving a reward for being violent, pleasure. So in this sense, they are more motivated to be violent than somebody who just has psychopathy. Just like psychopathy and sadism are often comorbid and share certain characteristics, narcissism and sadism are positively correlated. One of the theories is that individuals who are sadistic seek to dominate to build their self-esteem. And this tactic tends to be effective, at least in the short run. I mentioned that there's a lack of empathy with SP. It's not a lack of all types of empathy. Individuals with SP tend to have cognitive empathy, which is intact which makes sense because they have to be able to recognize how other people are feeling in order to gain pleasure from those people's feelings. But they tend to lack affective empathy, which is also called sympathy. So they don't feel the same way as somebody else feels. We see three main types of behaviors associated with SP, verbal, physical, and vicarious. And we'll see all three of these in the items I'll be listing. With verbal sadism, we see that pleasure is gained through embarrassing or humiliating others. With physical, it's simply physically hurting others. And with vicarious, this is when pleasure is gained through fantasizing or observing violence. Now getting to the 10 signs of a wife with sadistic traits. Now having one or more of these signs doesn't necessarily mean someone is sadistic. Rather, these signs are just associated with the construct. So sign number one is when the wife betrays or undermines the husband who is cooperating with the wife toward a common goal. So in a sense, the wife is willing to suffer if that's what it takes to make the husband suffer. For example, if the husband and wife are in a motor vehicle and the husband is driving and he gets pulled over for speeding, the wife might tell the officer that the husband has a controlled substance in his pocket. Now, if the husband gets arrested, that inconveniences the wife too, but she's willing to do that in order to cause the suffering. So moving on to number two, we see here the wife embarrasses the husband in public. Now, this has to do with tolerance or failure to experience socially related feelings like embarrassment. So the wife doesn't necessarily experience embarrassment as easily as the husband. So she may do things like in a restaurant, she might yell at the husband, of course, attracting the attention to herself, but also to the husband. She's not worried about any type of embarrassment. She does it because she enjoys seeing the husband embarrassed. So in a sense, kind of similar to the first item. Moving to sign number three, this is when the wife causes a heated argument and then leaves it unresolved. Now, this one also has to do with tolerance and a failure to experience feelings. The wife can tolerate the relationship being unstable in an unstable state, 
but she knows that the husband can't. She also knows that unresolved fights tend to tear him up inside, right? They cause pain. So the wife does this to cause pain, but also to establish dominance. Sign number four is infidelity. This is not simply to seek pleasure from the person with whom she's cheating, but rather to cause pain to the husband, to prove to the husband that he's not good enough to keep the wife happy, like he's an inadequate lover, to prove to him that she has power in the relationship, and to embarrass him. Often we see in instances like this, the wife really doesn't make an effort to keep the affair a secret, which makes sense given her goals. Sign number five is interfering with care. And I've seen this a number of times in my clinical experience. An example here would be if the husband is in the hospital to have a surgery and the wife is with them in the room after the surgery. So he may say to the wife that he's in pain and he would like to contact the nurse so the nurse could provide him with medication. As he reaches for the call button, the wife says, oh, I'll go out and find the nurse. Don't worry about it. Don't call her. But then she goes out and walks around for 15 minutes doing nothing or doing something like visiting social media sites on her phone or texting. When the husband doesn't receive the medication and questions her about it, she'll say, oh, I meant to do that, but I had more important things to do. What really stands out here is that the wife takes on the responsibility of alleviating the pain. She volunteers to go out and find the nurse and then deliberately fails to complete that task. So the husband suffers, but also the wife kind of demonstrates how callous she is and really communicates that effectively to the husband. Moving on to sign number six, this is waiting for an audience to deliver bad news. For example, let's say that the husband's employer is going to shut down and the husband is going to lose his job. Perhaps the wife finds out first because she has a friend that also works at that company. The wife is going to want to make sure that she's the one that gets to break that bad news to the husband, but she also wants an audience. So she may invite family members over or friends over and then bring up the conversation in front of them. So she gets to watch the suffering, but she also gets to add some embarrassment. If she can't get an audience, she may try to record the reaction on her smartphone. Sign number seven is when the wife magnifies the husband's relatively minor concerns to deliberately cause worry. I've seen this when the husband manifests some sort of relatively common symptom, whether it's related to physical or mental health. So the wife catastrophizes this concern and tries to cause stress for the husband. For example, if the husband says he forgot to grab his keys on the way out to his vehicle, she might say, oh, you might be developing dementia. If the husband has a pain in his stomach, the wife might say, oh, you better check that out because it could be cancer. So really, she's going to an unlikely explanation for the symptom. It's technically possible. Of course, almost every symptom could be a sign of something very serious, but it's highly unlikely. We could also see this with something like a job, like I talked about before. Maybe on the news it says that whatever field the husband works in is going to have an economic downturn. So the wife says, oh, now you're going to be unemployed. So again, just catastrophizing all these relatively minor concerns. Sign number eight is when the wife has recurring fantasies about the husband being hurt or killed. Now this is something, of course, that we see with narcissism and psychopathy as well. But here with sadistic personality, the wife wants to be there when it happens or have it on video. And really the best case scenario for her would be both. For example, if the husband is going out to play football with the kids in the backyard, the wife may watch intensely hoping for him to get hurt, and she may record that at the same time. So there's a sense she's really anticipating something positive, when of course she's looking for something negative to happen. Sign number nine is when the wife laughs hysterically when misfortune strikes that was not predicted. For example, if the husband sits down on a wooden chair and that chair breaks and he falls to the floor, and the wife won't worry about his well-being, but will laugh uncontrollably and express something like, that moment really made her day, or it brought some sort of special joy to her life to see that, to see him get hurt. So this brings me to the last sign, sign number 10. This last sign is really about when we tend to see manifestations of sadistic personality. The wife seeks to deliver what's referred to as antisocial punishment, all those things that she does to the husband, to the husband and others when her own mortality is threatened, or if she's reminded about her own mortality, just like what we see with narcissists. This could be the wife worried about her own life. For example, she may have an illness that's life-threatening, 
or it could be the death of a loved one. For example, a wife who has a father who's sick. These types of events remind the wife that someday her life will come to an end. This is referred to as an existential threat. Now, this can also extend, in a sense, to just hearing bad news. For example, if somebody criticizes the wife, that can be enough for antisocial punishment. Say the wife gets a bad performance evaluation at work, so after coming home, she demeans the husband, suggesting that he's overpaid in his job, an awful employee, he doesn't deserve to have a job, and just is generally a horrible person. So she's really absorbing that criticism. That's damaging her self-esteem. So she goes and attempts to demean and dominate the husband to compensate for that. And we see that pretty regularly with sadistic personality characteristics. So those are the 10 signs of a wife who has sadistic personality traits. I know whenever I talk about topics like sadism, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of sadistic traits to be interesting. Thanks for watching.